In the 1970s, the Voyager probe set out on an unparalleled journey into space. For more than 45 years, these very simply built and equipped probes have provided unique data, and they were the first man-made objects to conquer interstellar space. Voyager 1 in particular has surprised NASA since its flight into the far reaches of space. Several million kilometers from Earth, the probe suddenly picked up a strange signal. Before we take a closer look at this and other exciting discoveries of Voyager 1, we would like to ask you to contribute to our channel. We welcome any comments that fit the topic and add real value for our viewers. If you're one of our subscribers, we'll always reward your contribution with a heart and we'll pin your contribution to the top, where it will be read first by everyone. Just make sure you've already subscribed, like the video, and mention both at the beginning of your comment. Radio Waves in Interstellar Space In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space. This is the sphere of space that is outside the effective range of our Sun, as well as the effective ranges of the nearest stars. To this day, interstellar space is full of mysteries. We know very little of what goes on in this seemingly empty space. Since Voyager 1 was constructed in the 1970s, it's a very simple technical device. Voyager 1 and its sister probe Voyager 2 are equipped with simple measuring instruments, cameras, and radio wave receivers. The cameras were switched off many years ago to save energy. The radio wave receivers, on the other hand, are still active, and it was here that something most peculiar took place, just recently. For a long time, it was quiet in the vicinity of Voyager 1, but then the probe suddenly sent sounds to Earth that woke up researchers. At a distance of 23 billion kilometers from Earth, a faint, persistent hum suddenly revealed itself. According to scientists, the hum had been so faint that it had to be technically amplified to make it audible at all. After the sensational news that humans had received the first sounds from interstellar space, scientists also immediately provided an explanation. Very likely, the weak waves originate from gases. Within the interstellar medium, which consists mainly of hydrogen and plasma, there are disturbances that are very likely still caused by the influence of the solar winds, even this far out in space. It remains to be seen what other data Voyager 1 and 2 will send in the coming months. Both probes will likely continue to fly through space for thousands of years. However, NASA expects that radio contact with the probes will break off this year or next year at the latest. This will mark the end of an era that has lasted more than 45 years and has provided humans with unique insights into space. After all, the Voyager probes were the first to comprehensively study and photograph the outer planets, as well as provide impressions of the Kuiper Belt and far-flung regions of the solar system. Where does the solar system end? Researchers have long been unable to answer the question of where our solar system actually ends and interstellar space begins. Our star constantly sends streams of plasma into space through its solar winds, forming a spherical hemisphere in which the entire star system is embedded. After spending the first decades of their flight studying the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, the probes flew farther and farther into regions that had never been studied before. On their long journey, these probes were and are exposed to great stresses and strains, and yet the technology functioned flawlessly all these years. Today, experts attribute this fact to the fact that both probes were built in a very simple but effective way. The technical difference between the Voyager probes and modern probes corresponds approximately to that between an MP3 player and a tape recorder or a smartphone with a dial telephone. Of course, researchers hope that the technology would last long enough for us on Earth to finally get data from the end of the solar system for the first time. Those expectations were to be fulfilled. 
many years after Voyager 1 left the last planets behind. The probe radioed data from rapidly changing magnetic fields. Having never before seen or measured where and how our sun's catchment ends, researchers did not know in which layers of the heliosphere Voyager 1 was really located. Scientifically, astronomers were entering uncharted territory with this mission. The excitement on Earth was great, and every signal, every movement of the probe's measuring instruments, were received with great joy. The end of the solar sphere seems to be dominated by flares. You can think of it as billowing winds and fields that sometimes overlap and become weaker and stronger in places. Researchers could even measure a violent solar flare weeks later at the edge of the solar system. That's how long it took the plasma streams to travel the 10 to 15 billion kilometers to the end of the solar system. Plasma streams move through space at a speed of about 1,000 kilometers per second. This makes them much slower than light. To reach Earth, a plasma stream from the Sun usually takes only one to two days. Voyager provided data from fascinating flows of particles and solar winds and was able to receive radio waves from flares far from the Sun for the first time. At the very edge of the heliosphere, the Sun's plasma clouds, which are still comparatively warm and less dense there, encounter cooler and denser interstellar plasma. The drag shapes the heliosphere and compresses it at the outermost edge. Voyager's measurements showed much denser flows just before the probe entered interstellar space for good. Our solar system is not static in space or firmly suspended in plasma. Rather, the Sun and its planets move through the interstellar medium at a speed of about 84,000 kilometers per hour. By Voyager's measurements at the edge of the heliosphere, these numbers could be confirmed for the first time. So, in a sense, the solar system was flying along with the tiny probe. It was a great surprise to see how the probe's flight behavior changed as soon as it entered interstellar space. The Mystery of Interstellar Space We know very little so far about the gigantic space between stars and star systems. Between the absolute end of the solar system, the heliopause, and the nearest star, there are empty spaces with an extension of 40 trillion kilometers. Then, we would be at our next star neighbor, Alpha Centauri. From there, it is again trillions of kilometers to the next star, and so on. Today, we already know that interstellar space is by no means empty. Rather, it contains gases, particles, beams of light traveling through space, and the mysterious dark matter. The interstellar medium can be called the breeding ground of the cosmos, or space itself. As late as the beginning of the 20th century, researchers thought the space in which our universe is located was actually empty and that the stars and planets were firmly suspended within it. Only through the work of Albert Einstein and some of his contemporaries do we know that the entire universe is incredibly mobile and all objects are on a constant journey and subject to change. Interstellar space and its underlying structures very likely harbor previously unknown forms of matter, as well as structures and filaments along which the known forms of the universe move. Where are the Voyager probes headed? Both Voyager probes are equipped with plutonium batteries which have incredibly long lifetimes, but are still not inexhaustible. Many of the measuring instruments and the cameras of the probes were switched off at the latest after the passage of the heliopause in order to save valuable energy. The communication with the probes works even over this enormous distance via quite normal radio waves. Meanwhile, a signal needs about 23 hours to reach the Earth. As mentioned earlier, Radio contact with Voyager 1 will break off at some point during the year. Then the probe and its sister probe, which has also been in interstellar space for some time, will continue to fly anyway. To date, the probe has traveled about 129 astronomical units. Which distances Voyager 1 will still cover is open. The probe can still fly centuries or millennia through the cosmos. 
According to current calculations, Voyager 1 will reach the star AC plus 793-888 in the constellation of the Little Bear in 38,000 years. Since the distance is probably 1.7 light years, the probe will probably not be captured by the star system, but will continue to fly until it's attracted by a gravitational net. It would be conceivable that Voyager would get into a distant star system in this way at some point, and there it would advance further and further to the star on the gravitational attraction paths. Either the probe then burns up in a star, it is hit by an asteroid, or is found by an extraterrestrial civilization. For this case, both Voyager probes have messages of our world on board. Voyager 1 and 2 were equipped with a golden record each. On the discs are music pieces, pictures of everyday life scenes, noises, and information about the Earth, as well as the species humans stored. So that extraterrestrials can play the records correctly, there is even an instruction manual in easy-to-understand pictograms. Experts assume that the golden discs have a durability of several billion years. So it's quite possible that the messages will be received by someone at some point. Whether we humans still exist at this time, and whether a recipient civilization would be able to answer our message, we cannot know today, of course. After more than 45 years, the Voyager missions are slowly coming to an end. The probes continue their way, but we will not be able to follow this anymore. Scientists of NASA are pleased about the unbelievable success but also have some parting pain. Quite a few technicians, researchers, and other specialists involved in the project have spent almost half their lives accompanying the Voyager missions. However, it's also clear that space offers so many more exciting mission destinations that astrophysicists and NASA experts will certainly not get bored. We are at the end of this journey with the Voyager spacecraft for today, and thank you for watching. Now, We'd love to hear from you in the comments. Tell us what you think about the mysterious radio waves Voyager picked up in interstellar space. Do you think we humans will be investigating the interstellar medium in the foreseeable future? And what would we possibly find there? Share your thoughts and ideas with us and remember to mention your subscription, if you have one, and to like the video. We'll see you next time at Simply Space.